Hi everyone, my name is Sandiswa and welcome to Tax Shelter. This channel is about simplifying tax for small businesses and individuals. Today's video is about explaining the tax terms that are often used when we are talking to clients about tax. And they're also often used by SARS as well, so that you can at least have an idea of what SARS is talking about when they tell you to submit a tax return. Let's get into it then. The first term that I'm going to be explaining is obviously a tax number. So a tax number is a 10-digit number that you are given when you register for tax. It's unique to everyone. No one person should have um, no one person should have the same tax number as the other. And it's in very rare cases whereby you'll find that a person that has been issued a text number, they'll get another text number or they'll have two text numbers issued, um, two text numbers issued under their name. Otherwise, a text number is a number that you should normally have for life and it should be one. It's like your ID number, basically. So it identifies you in terms of text purposes. This is now an income text number. And you must remember, guys, there's different types of texts. In South Africa so those different types of tax they normally have their own tax numbers for instance if you are registered for vet you will have a vet number if you are reg registered for pay as you and you will have a pay as you and number but in this situation I'm referring to an income tax number because that's what affects most of us individuals and companies obviously but right now the 10 digit number that I'm talking about is referring to individuals right so that's what the tax number is. It's also sometimes referred to as an income tax reference number. If you'll see sometimes in tax documents, SARS will say tax reference number or they will say reference number. That is your tax number, right? If it's got 10 digits, then that is your tax number. You will also find it in your RIP5, which I will explain what it is in a moment, by the way. Anyway, next is tax season so what is tax season well a tax season is the period in which SARS will tell you when to submit your income tax returns that is your income as well as your deductions or expenses for South Africa the income tax season normally runs for individuals it normally runs from July right up until November for non-provisional taxpayers or January for provisional taxpayers. So that is a tax season. So when you throw around this word, oh, it's tax season, you will do this when the tax season starts. That is what we are referring to, right? The next term that I'm going to explain is a tax year. So what is a tax year? A tax year is a 12 month period here in South Africa that runs from March right up until February. There are in situations whereby for private companies or CCs, their tax year is different. Sometimes it runs from July to June, but it's always a 12-month period. And in that period, that's when SARS, when you are submitting during tax season, they will request your incomes and expenses for that tax year. Hope that makes sense. Next is... A case number or a reference number so what normally happens is when SARS is doing a verification or when SARS is requesting documents from you for whatever reason they will give you on that letter a verification number or a case number that number identifies that verification that you are doing with SARS in most cases they will normally ask that when you are inquiring pertaining to that verification in other words when you call the call center and asking them when is SARS finishing my verification so that i can get my refund they will ask you to quote that number it's normally a nine digit number so which is why i normally tell my clients whenever you will be calling SARS or inquiring SARS about something make sure that you get your reference number because whenever you've spoken to the call center person, they need to give you a reference number for that call. And the reason I tell you to do this is because whenever you're writing a complaint, either to SARS or to the tax ombud, you need to have a list of your, of your reference numbers that you've used in the past 
to try and speak to SARS to resolve your problem. So it is very important that whenever you call SARS, whenever they send you a letter, you keep track of those verification verification numbers or, or the, of those case numbers in order to make sure that the day you decide that you've had enough enough you want to do a complaint either to SARS or to the tax ombud then you have a list of verification numbers i also even encourage people to make sure that whenever they phone SARS or when they email SARS or they do something in order to get a problem resolved with SARS make sure you write the verification number or reference number together with the date so that when you write to the tax ombud or when you complain to SARS themselves you have a list of dates and ref reference numbers that show all your efforts that you've put through in order to make sure that you are resolving your issue with SARS. Next term is a notice of assessment. So during the tax season when you are submitting your income tax returns you will get after you've submitted after you've hit submit normally happens in a few minutes especially with individuals with companies it may take longer it depends but with individuals in a few minutes after you've submitted you get back what we call a notice of assessment it's an ita 34 for individuals you will see this on the right hand corner of the document it will be written ita 34 that is a notice of assessment so what that is is it's a summary of what you've just submitted to sars it's a summary of your incomes expenses deductions and all those things even rebates and that you may have gotten from sars from your medicals and from your rebates that sars normally issues to each and everyone now that notice of assessment is normally there for you to scrutinize to make sure that whatever it is that you submitted is reflecting on that verification because sometimes it happens it's a systemic systemic error that even the tax ombud has identified that sometimes SARS will omit deductions or sometimes SARS will omit pay as you end that you've already paid or sometimes SARS will disallow oh, maybe your travel allowance and all those things so that is why it is important after you've submitted your return you take your notice of assessment and you scrutinize it to make sure that what you've submitted actually is actually what the notice assessment notice of assessment is stating what i normally again advise people or my clients when i do my tax planning sessions with them is that when you after you've completed your return there is a button that allows you to do a calculation more or less to see what you're going to get from SARS or what you're not you what you're going to be owing to SARS so that calculation is normally a summary it's just a summary of what you are going to submit and the nice thing about it is that there's no commitment it's unlike when you've hit the submit button and there is absolutely nothing you can do well there is something you can do you can request request a correction but then that takes time but my point is always before you submit your return after you've completed everything make sure you do a, a calculation so that you can more or less see what you're supposed to be getting from SARS or what your um, notice of assessment should be looking like so that when you actually get the notice of assessment and the notice of assessment doesn't add, um, doesn't um, agree with your calculation then what you do is you compare and see where the issue is and check where SARS has made a mistake or where you've made a mistake or whatever the reason may be. What is important, what I'm trying to, um, to emphasize here is that it's, be sure to check your notice of assessment. It's a very, very important because after SARS has issued that notice of assessment, you have 30 working days to actually try and make sure that you inquire or you write an objection or a request for reasons for whatever that is that you don't agree with that SARS has put on your notice of assessment. If you don't know what an objection is, then I would advise you to check out my YouTube video on SARS dispute process. It's titled SARS dispute process. Check it out. I'll try and see if I can't put it on this video somewhere. So check out that video. But what I'm trying to say is, Always make sure that within 30 days of receiving your notice of assessment, you 
dispute what you don't agree with with SARS because then if you wait for longer then SARS can say that you've waited too long the official time that you have to dispute a notice of assessment is 30 working days okay the next term that I'm going to explain is a statement of account. This one is self-explanatory, guys. What normally happens is if you want to see a summary or a history of your returns and what amount you owed or what amount you are owing to SARS at the moment, then you would go to e-filing and get what you call a statement of account. So a statement of account normally lists all the returns that have submitted depending on the period that you have asked for. For instance, if you asked from 2010 up until now, then you will get a list of all the returns that you've submitted from 2010 up until now, the refunds that you've received or the amounts that you've owed to SARS, the amounts that you've paid and any interest that SARS has charged you for not paying, that will be on your statement of account. Okay, it's the statement of account is called an ITSA. ITSA, that's what you, you will see on the right hand corner of the document. If it's a statement of account, it will have ITSA. Then I'm going to be moving now on to documents that we normally use when we are submitting returns. One of them is an RIP5. So what is an RIP5? An RIP5 is a document that's normally issued by your employer. It has your personal details such as your name, your income tax number, your address, and sometimes even your bank account number. So what an RIP5 shows is the incomes that you've earned, the deductions. For instance, um, the income such as your gross income, such as your Fringe benefits. If you don't know what a fringe benefit, then please check out my uh, video on fringe benefits and uh, your fringe benefits uh, and, and the, um, the deductions that have been um, taken out of your salary, such as the medical aid, if your medical aid is with your employer, such as your pension, if your pension is with your employer. So if the employer is the one that actually deducts the medical aid and then and and then transfers transfers it to the relevant service provider, as well as if your uh, pension is deducted by your employer and then transferred to the relevant service provider, all those things will show on your RIP five. So that's what an RIP five is. Eventually, an RIP five will be sent out to SARS because SARS is the one that actually wants to see how much you earned and how much income tax was deducted from you. So all that information comes from an RRP5. In most cases, you'll find that when you open your income tax return during tax season, you find that your RIP5 is already loaded. Now, the important thing about an RIP5, guys, especially that one that is already loaded on e-filing, check it if it's correct. Because if it's not correct and you go ahead and submit, then it's a long and tedious pro uh, it's a long and tedious process for you to actually try now and make sure go to your employer and sometimes you have to go to the police station for affidavits and things and then go to your employer and ask them to correct the RIP five and then go back to SARS write to them and tell them okay so now the RIP five has been corrected and then SARS replies back to you okay fine then if the RIP five has been corrected then go ahead and submit the correct it's just a long process if the RIP five is wrong you can imagine most likely everything about your income tax return becomes wrong so it's a very tedious process and especially guys during now with the pandemic and everything because right now what has happened is most companies have closed down right it's even more difficult now to actually get someone to assist you with actually loading the correct rp5 onto the SARS system especially if you've been retrenched and then your company has then closed down so always make sure that when tax season starts, even if you're not going to submit your income tax return right away, check that your RIP5 is, is correct. This is also the reason why I don't encourage people to actually accept SARS's income tax return. Um, what normally happens is during tax season, SARS sends um, already calculated tax returns to people and ask them to just accept. I encourage people not to do that because you haven't checked if everything is correct, first of all. 
So you're just accepting something you don't know. And when you open your income tax return yourself and check it, it gives you an opportunity to check all these things that I've stated, including the RIP5, which is very, very important. Right? Okay. Next document that is normally used when you're submitting tax return is a medical aid certificate. Now, a medical aid certificate, again, self-explanatory. Each and every year, medical service providers will send you your medical aid certificate. It basically summarizes your contributions as well as all the, um, the expenses that you try to put through your medical aid, but the medical aid had rejected. There are many reasons why medical aids reject expenses. Sometimes it's because you've used a doctor that's not in their network, or sometimes it's because your savings have finished, right? So what I normally tell people, one, people confuse a medical aid certificate with a medical aid statement they are not the same thing guys a statement is normally something that you'll get as other service providers issue it on a um, quarterly basis other service providers don't issue one at all what they will do instead is they will give you like you have an app or an online platform whereby you're able to print your statement when and when you need one so, but a, a medical aid certificate, it will be issued and it will state that. That's normally the summary of, um, like I said, it's normally the summary of your contributions or the expenses that were not allowed. Sometimes it has some interest and I don't know how that works, but the medical aid that will have your interest will, will give you interest on your savings. And then it will have the summary of all the beneficiaries with their details which is also something very important when you're submitting your income tax return because you get your rebates from SARS based on the number of beneficiaries that you have on that medical aid, right? So medical aid certificate, again, very important. If you find that your, sub, your service provider is not sending you the certificate requested, even though in recent years, SAR, the service providers actually load those certificates on e-filing again it's important to have your own certificate on hand the importance of that is that when there is something wrong then you are able to check and notify your service provider and SARS that your medical aid certificate is actually wrong because human error happens guys even those medical aid certificates are loaded by people right so it's very important you have your physical copy or your soft copy that you have somewhere other than the copy that your service provider is going to be loading on the system at SARS. It's also important to have your medical aid certificate because with some people, after some time when the saving, savings on the medical aid have finished, the people stop putting through stuff via the medical aid, right? So they go to the pharmacies and they, they pay out of their pockets, which is um, information that SARS uses again when they're calculating your tax rebate. Now, one of two things must happen is one, whenever you're going to buy medication that is prescribed by a doctor, always try to do one of two things. One, Put it through your medical aid even though, even though you know your savings have lapsed. The reason I'm saying this is that what normally happens is when you put it through and then it doesn't go through, it adds on that um, line on your medical aid certificate that shows the expenses that you covered out of pocket, right? That's the advantage. And the nice thing about that is that when it's on your medical aid certificate, then SARS normally doesn't want to require you to actually provide slips. But if you are not doing that or if you haven't done that, then make sure that when you are buying expenses or when you are buying medication that was prescribed by a doctor out of your pocket, you keep the receipts. You keep the prescription and keep the receipt as well. Very, very important. Because what normally happens is you will have medical expenses amounting to 50,000 right, that you paid out of your pocket, but then your medical aid certificate will be showing 10,000 rand, which is maybe the one or two times when you tried to put through medical expenses and you were told that your, your savings have lapsed. So it's very important to make sure that you keep those slips, even if you do have a medical aid certificate. Super, super important. Okay. Now, 
the next term we're going to talk about is a travel logbook so this one guys oh it's a bit of a mess with songs eh? it's a bit of a mess but a travel logbook is basically a summary of your travels business as well as personal throughout the tax period or the tax year now SARS they have has their own logbook on the SARS website. I encourage everyone, even if you have your fancy um tracker that records everything for you, I encourage you to use the SARS logbook because SARS are more they're more likely to accept your travel claim when it's you've submitted their own logbook this has been proven time and time again i know in most cases you'll find that your own logbook that you use for from your tracker and sars is one and not that much different but for whatever reason sars is very closed off like this and they normally want their own logbook so i know it's a lot of work it's tedious it's a lot of admin but i always advise people just Print out the SARS logbook and use it. Every single day after you're traveling, record. It's a lot of work, but if you want that refund at the end of the tax year, then I think it's worth it. So always, always, always download the SARS logbook because SARS will disallow your travel for petty things. Petty, petty things. Like for instance, you didn't write reasons for your travel. I mean, like, seriously, the reasons are work. I know also that there are people who take advantage of travel. But then, in most cases, really, people get travel allowance from work because they travel for work. But then, I encourage you to use the SARS travel logbook. It's on their website. Just type in travel logbook and you will get it. Right? Next is what we call an IT3B in text terms. So what that is, is it's basically a summary of the interest as well as the dividends that you have received from financial institutions such as banks or insurance companies and all those things. So if you're someone that um, um, has a savings and investments and and, and shares and all those things then you should be getting a couple of it3bs a year which are showing a summary of your interest and dividends the reason you are getting those it3bs is because you have to declare that information to sars again most institutions in recent years will load that information to sars but i do urge you if you can to get your own certificate so that you have them on hand to compare to make sure that whatever is on e-filing is what you have received as well right that is what an it3b is interest as well as dividends that you've received throughout the period you will get them normally from your banks as well as other insurance or financial institutions nah? next is an it3c IT3C, that is when you have sold whatever you held with the banks and insurance institutions or financial institutions. Then you will get an IT3B. It will show basically, okay, Sandy was sold these shares and these shares cost this amount of money. And from that, she made this amount of money. That information you will find on an IT3B. Also, again, very important to get your own, even though in most cases it is loaded on the SARS uh, website by the financial institutions. It's important to get your own so that if that one is wrong, then you are able to say, but hold on, SARS, that's not correct. Okay. Now, last but not least, retirement annuity certificate. Retirement annuity certificate, again, you will get from financial institutions. It's a summary of your contributions to your voluntary retirement company. So if each and every year you are contributing 500 rand to your selected retirement company, then you will have the summary of those contributions because again, you need those in order to get a deduction from SARS. Again, 
Okay, normally loaded on e-filing in recent years, but it's important to get your own certificate, certificate so that you can have for your own peace of mind and also to make sure that everything that is loaded is correct. And also to make sure that all the retirement codes, you can have multiple retirement um, certificates because you are contributing to different retirement um, annuities to in different institutions. So it's always advisable to make sure that you have all those documents to make sure that you have the information. What a long video. I hope this helps someone if there is another terminology or term that we use in text that you would like me to explain of if you've been hearing about this text term that tax practitioners or SARS uses and you don't know what it means, then you're more than welcome to comment down below and let me know what that term is. I will try and find out. If I don't know what that term is, I'll find out for you. We'll find out together and I will reply. Um, yeah. Thank you guys again. If you like this content, then please, 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 please give me a thumbs up as well as maybe subscribe so that in future you can see all my videos when I upload. Yes, otherwise, thank you very much. I will see you on my next video.